How to make sure Satan isn't blocking your prayers. Daniel 10, 12 and 13, King James Version. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But, lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. This is a story about the prayerful Daniel. Daniel started praying from day one, and he was expecting an answer from the Lord, but no answer was coming through. This made Daniel continue to pray until the 21st day. The angel that God sent told Daniel that God had answered his prayers on the very first day, but something happened. The devil withheld the answers to the prayers of Daniel. Now I wonder, I just wonder how many of your prayers are being stopped by the enemy. How many children of God are busy looking at God, angry with God, frustrated with God because he hasn't answered their prayers, crying out, why haven't you answered my prayers? They have prayed and prayed, but the situation is getting worse. They have prayed and prayed, but the situation is getting darker and darker. They have prayed and prayed, but the situation is getting more hopeless and more hopeless. They have prayed and prayed, but it feels as if God isn't even listening. They prayed with good intentions, but no answers are coming through. Are you like this? Have you prayed hard, but it seems as if God will not answer your prayers? And have you given up? Do you think if Daniel gave up on the first day of his prayer, his answer would have come through? Do you think if Daniel had given up on the tenth day, his answers would have come to him? Many of us like to give up on prayer. We have forgotten what it is like to be persistent in the place of prayer. We have forgotten what it is like to never stop praying. We have forgotten what it is like to use prayer to fight. The devil stopped the prayers of Daniel for 21 days. How many of us can pray continuously for 21 days because we want an answer? How many of us can remain in the presence of God because we want to listen to Him? How many of us can say, come what may, I will not leave the presence of God? How many of us can pray like Daniel in this age? The people of those days didn't stop praying. They would pray until something happens. That is the Old Testament type of prayer. Persistence. Good old-fashioned persistence. That is how you can make sure that the devil is not stopping your prayers. Do you think when you pray, the devil will want the prayers to be answered? He knows that when you pray and your prayers are answered, it boosts your faith in God. There is something that answered prayer does to your faith that the devil doesn't want you to experience. He doesn't want your faith in God to be increased. Satan doesn't want that. And he will do all it takes to make sure that you get tired of praying. You must pray until something happens. Jesus said men ought to pray and not faint. These are the instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ. Men ought to pray. If you are a mother, you need to pray. If you are a father, you need to pray. If you are a son or daughter, you need to pray. No one, absolutely no one can take prayer from you. You could be on a bus, but you can still pray. You can be locked up in a jail cell as you listen to me right now, and you can still pray. You could have no tongue, but you can still pray. 
You could be in the darkest hole on earth right now. You could be facing persecution, but you can still pray. They can take your freedom away from you. They can take your dignity. They can take everything, absolutely everything from you. But one thing they cannot take from you is prayer. Talk to your Lord Jesus. Jesus said, men ought to pray and not faint. The people of old would never stop praying. The people of old understood persistence. The people of old understood spiritual warfare. The people of old understood that there was a real devil. They would fight with prayer. These people are called great people because they stayed in the place of prayer. They knew that the place of prayer is the place of power. When they started praying, the devil became afraid. He is not afraid because they are praying, but he is afraid because they will not stop praying. You know that little 20-second prayer you do before you sleep. The devil loves that type of cupcake Christianity. You can pray for a few minutes and you are asleep. If you are like this, then you are not the kind of person the devil is afraid of. These people will never stop praying until something happens. When the devil stops their prayers, he knows he will be fought seriously. It doesn't matter how long the devil stops their prayer. They will stay there and fight him. I am not saying spend the day and night in prayer, but when is the last time you prayed for even 30 minutes? God keeps your heart ticking for 24 hours and you cannot pray to him 30 minutes a day. How many hours can you go in prayer? How many times can you pray in a day? Do you sleep off while praying? Let us be sincere with ourselves. You want to be great. You want to make something happen in your life, but you sleep off three minutes into prayer. What great things do you want to do? You are deceiving yourself. Do you think the devil will leave you and let you go? Do you think Satan wants you to achieve anything? The great men of God that we admire in the Bible were men of prayer. Do you think the devil will like it that you are growing in prayer? Maybe you don't understand. Satan does not want you to talk to God at all. He wants to sever the relationship between you and God. Satan wants that love for God in your life to become cold. The devil is trying to make things hard for you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, King James Version, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The devil is not sleeping, but going around to kill and destroy. The devil is not ready to let you go, but here you are, sleeping when you ought to be praying heavily. Here you are, snoring when you ought to be speaking to God. Here you are, wasting your time watching TV shows, when you ought to be showing the devil greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What kind of Christianity are we even practicing in this generation? What kind of Christian life are we even living in this generation? The kind of life we are living is not the kind of life Jesus lived. How can we call ourselves followers of Christ when we don't pray? Jesus was prayerful. The Bible described how Jesus prayed. Do you even know how powerful Jesus is? Do you know the kind of miracle Jesus did 2,000 years ago? Do you know how the demons feared him? And the example Jesus set was prayer. Time and time again, God tells us to pray in his word, and that's what we should do. Even if you pray in your heart, God hears. God hears everything. All you have to do is pray. Just 
Pray in any way you can. Never stop praying. Are you ready to make up your mind that you will never allow the devil to stop your prayer? Are you ready to say that you will never sleep off while praying? Are you ready to say that you will not give in to the pressures of the devil? Are you ready to pray until something happens? Now is the time. This is the time for you to pray until something happens. How to Meet God During Hard Times There are times the storms of life billow strongly against us. But we do not have to lose faith or think that God is beyond reach. When we are facing hard times, we must learn to hold on to God. Our challenges should not take us away from God. They should rather draw us closer to Him, because only He can rescue us. When Peter walked on water with Jesus and he began to sink, he acknowledged that only Jesus could save him, and he cried out for help. Never run away from God when you are facing hard times. There are spiritual tips that will help you meet with God during hard times, and I'll share that with us. No matter how difficult the season of your life may be, you can secure the face of God in it. Read and meditate on the Word of God. God gave us a great instruction in Joshua 1.8, which says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Each time you read and meditate on the Word of God, you are interfacing with God Himself. The Word of God is as potent as God. God is not more powerful than His Word is. If you want to experience God in hard times, learn to engage in reading and studying His Word. In fact, there is no experience in life that the Word of God does not make provisions for in our lives. No matter what you are going through, there is a particular verse that will address your situation. Ephesians 6.18 reads, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Bible refers to the Word of God as the sword of the Spirit. It is a defensive weapon against the devil. However, the Word of God does not work against the devil by stretching out your Bible against him or by making the Bible as your pillow. It is what you have studied from the Scriptures that you can employ against the devil. Jesus defeated the devil three consecutive times with the Word of God. Each of those times, the answer of Jesus was, It is written. If you do not know what is written, you will be helpless against the devil. Prayer alone will not defeat the devil. If it would, Satan wouldn't be able to tempt Jesus after 40 days and nights of fasting and prayers. The Word of God is our sword. Not studying it presents you bare and unable to fight back against the devil. The Bible is a living book. It contains the eternal and infallible words of God. When you read the Word of God out loud, you are actually hearing God speaking audibly to you. When you study the Word of God, you are engaging Him in your life and you are bringing Him into your situation. The Bible says that the Word of God is powerful and that it is living and active. It is just as active as God. Brother, don't go too far to find God. He is present in His Word. Sister, God isn't a million miles away from you. He can relate with you through the Bible. When you are facing hard times, let the promises of God's Word be your consolation. Romans 15.4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. This means that God comforts and gives us hope through the Scriptures. So many people become restless and hopeless because they are far away from the Word of God. There is no aspect of our lives that the Word of God does not make provisions for. 
but our failure to study it will make the promises of God to be hidden from us. The psalmist says that the Word of God is a lamp to his feet and a light to his path. It then means that those who neglect the Word of God will be walking and wallowing in gross darkness as they will lack illumination. Our success is attached to the Word of God, and our failure begins when we neglect it. We will fail both spiritually and physically if we neglect the Word of God. When we expose ourselves to God's Word, our minds become renewed and our heart becomes enlightened. And that way, we'll be able to know the will of God. The will of God is revealed in His Word. It is embedded in His commandments and instructions. Spend time in prayer. Daniel 2, 17-19 Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Prayer is one of the greatest ways we can engage God. Daniel and his three friends were experiencing a hard time because Nebuchadnezzar had ordered that all his wise men should be killed if none of them could interpret his dream. The challenge which Daniel and his friends had was life-threatening. Most people don't think of prayer when they are faced with bad situations. You see, neglecting to pray when you are passing through a difficult time is like telling God you don't need His intervention. If you want to meet God during hard times, learn to engage in prayers. Daniel and his friends prayed, and they desired the mercies of God, and God came through for them. There is nothing hidden that cannot be revealed in the place of prayer. James 5.13 Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. God answers prayers. If there are people to pray, God will answer. The Lord asked us to call on Him with a promise to answer and show us great and mighty things which we do not yet know in Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. God delights in the prayer of his people. That is why the Bible says in James 5.16 that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous have powerful effects. What makes our prayers effective is the fact that God gives answers to them, particularly when they are prayed in accordance to his word or will. Never let your circumstances stop you from praying. Acknowledge God as the only solution to your predicaments. The reason many people seem not to experience God in their hard times is because they seek for help from sources other than God. Until you acknowledge God as the only solution to your challenge, He may not show up on your behalf. Psalm 16.4 says, that the sorrows of those who go after other gods shall be multiplied. When you are passing through hard times, put all your trust in God, like Job, who confessed that he knows that his Redeemer lives. Job knew that only God could help him out of his situation, and he said, Though he slays me, yet I will trust in him. Job actually saw God at the end of his predicament. God came to his rescue. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. God always intervenes in the situations of those who acknowledge him as the only solution to their problems, because he will never share his glory with anyone or anything. We are not helping God by trusting in Him. We save ourselves from many troubles when we put our absolute trust in God. God is the only being that can never fail. 
Many have trusted in their wealth, but it couldn't save them when they are faced with the reality of life's challenges. There is nothing in this life that we can hold on to. The things of this world are not to be trusted. They are ephemeral. Therefore, they have a time limit. But our trust in God will never fail. In fact, our faith in God transcends time. It will take us into blissful eternity with Him.